guys, my name is Isaac and I am a lighting and environment artist here at Quixel Epic. This is the first of three videos that I will be making, where I will be taking you guys through how I went about making this abandoned apartment scene. In this first video I will go through my general design process for this scene, and in the next two videos I will cover the set dressing and lighting. When making this scene, it was really important to me to only use software that anyone can get a hold of. So apart from Photoshop, I've only used Unreal, Mixer, Blender and Bridge to make this scene. I also tried to keep this scene as small and confined as possible, so it wouldn't feel overwhelming for any new users. So, let's get started! I was tasked with making an abandoned apartment scene. And the first thing I always do when I start a new project is to gather a photo reference. Normally, I would like to take my own photo reference and travel to an actual location. When you do that, you get a completely different sense of uh, scale and color and light. But sometimes that is impossible and then these reference packs come in really, really handy. And there are tons of really great reference packs out there on, uh, say, ArtStation or Gumroad. And we'll make sure to post the link to this specific reference pack that I use for this scene in the video description. And I really can't stress enough how important it is to actually use photo reference when you're making a scene like this. Not only for inspiration, but real life is filled with so many small details that are nearly impossible to just come up with using your imagination. It's all about trying to mimic what real life actually looks like, and not what you think that real life kind of looks like. So in order to be able to mimic how debris accumulate in a corner or how light interacts with a certain surface, photographs really are an essential tool. So, once I've found some reference photos that I really like, I start making concept art. But I also start to look around in the Megascans library to kind of plan what assets and textures that I want to use for this project. With such a vast library, it can sometimes be hard to find what you're looking for. But by using the different categories, collections and biomes, and by using different keywords, it makes it so much easier to find the assets that you want to use for your scene. Also, since the library gets bigger every day, I often just scroll around through the different categories, and if I find something I like, I make sure to favorite it so I can come back for it later. And for the concept art, I always follow this one rule, and that is to be as quick as possible. In this stage of the design process, it's really important to be able to fail fast. With these pictures here, for example, I've only spent about one or two hours on each image. And I do that because often I get an idea in my head and it looks really, really good, but sometimes once you get it down on paper, it's not as cool as you thought it would be. And if you only spent one or two hours on an image, you've only wasted one or two hours. But say you've spent four days, you know, you've wasted four days of work on an image that you're not going to be using. And reversely, if the image turns out to be really good, you can just rebuild the scene and start adding all the details and stuff that you want to make the scene look really, really great. Another reason to why I always am this quick when I make concept art is that the second thing I use it for is to illustrate my ideas to my bosses and colleagues. And they really don't need a beautiful illustration to be able to understand what I want to make. They only need to understand the rough idea and core concept. Here you can see a few comparison shots between my original concept art and the final shot within Unreal. And as you can see here, I generally kept it quite close to the original concept art, but uh, I still had to make a few uh, small design changes once I started working in Unreal. To illustrate this, here is my original sketch for the apartment layout, and as you can see there are a few things missing here. For example, there was no window to begin with, and the uh, collapsed part of the wall was originally smaller. Also, I did not include a collapsed part of the roof, and there was actually supposed to be a third room, but I later changed that into a smaller exterior room. 
And all of these are just few examples of uh, the design iterations I made once I started working in Unreal. Thank you all so much for watching this first video. If you have any questions, be sure to write those in the comments below. And also make sure to tune in to my next two videos. They will be more in-depth videos regarding set dressing and world building, and the third and final video will be completely dedicated to lighting, both from an artistic and a technical point of view. So be sure to tune into those, and I'll see you all next time.